I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, in a small town called Batavia. With a population of about 26,000, it has some suburban staples such as a river, plenty of nature preserves to walk around in, a historic downtown district, local businesses, the middle class, and white fences. After spending 20 years growing up here, from 3 to 23, I got bored of it. You start to run out of interesting things to do after being in one place for so long. I wanted to leave. A lot has changed in the 20 years I spent living in Batavia, and one time period that feels quite disconnected from the rest of my life is 2009 to 2012. And for me, that is also known as middle school. And wow, the culture was different back then. Let's start by introducing the character of this video essay, me. I changed a lot in the summer of 09. In elementary school, I was social, energetic, excitable. But then, sixth grade. I became shy, quiet, awkward, and definitely not a cool kid. My friend Brayden, one of the only few friends I had at the time, and the only friend I had at the time who I'm still friends with today. He was responsible for most of my hobbies back in middle school. Which brings me to video games. The world of gaming was very different back in 2009. It wasn't as massive of an industry as it is today. And you were still bullied in school for playing any game that wasn't Call of Duty. God forbid you play Minecraft, but more on that later. When I first entered middle school, the two most important games to me at that time were Pokemon and, without a doubt, Wizard 101. Now, I outgrew Pokemon sometime in 6th grade, before getting back into it in high school, but Wizard 101? That was the best. So there are different types of wizards in Wizard 101. It could be fire, ice, storm, life, myth, balance, and death. My character's name was Charles Nighthaven. Now, guess what type of wizard I was with the last name Nighthaven. Think, Nighthaven, Nighthaven, Nighthaven. So I was a storm wizard. Anyway, so I was a nerd in middle school, which there isn't anything wrong with that. But at the time, I really wanted to be cool, except I wasn't. I was too shy. On Wizard 101, however, I was pretty popular. I would host wild house parties, be invited to wild house parties, reject wild house parties because I had other wild house parties to go to, and this was my first experience with an online friend. This friend's in-game name was Madison, and a friendship like this was novel to me. One where there's an air of mystery because you don't actually know each other. But we would play the game, we talked a lot in the game, we chilled, we would talk about things that weren't even related to Wizard 101. We even told each other what state we lived in. That wasn't even allowed in Wizard 101. But let's just say I found out that typing ill, in, no, and is bypassed the filter. But yeah, we would log in and do missions together. It was pretty fun. But that all changed in the summer of 2010 when I went to summer camp for a week. When I got back, Madison was gone. It's this online friends. It's vacant. All my fellow wizards were gone. The parties were over, and Wizard 101 would never be the same again. But then, another, much more violent video game came to fill the hole in my heart. Raiden introduced me to Halo one night at his house, and I had nightmares for weeks of aliens invading the Earth. And I loved it. I would go to Braden's house every opportunity I could get to play Halo and Halo 2. 
I begged my mom for an Xbox 360 in Halo Reach. I got it. Halo Reach Online Multiplayer was some of the most fun PvP gaming experiences I have ever had. To this day, Halo Reach is one of my favorite campaigns in any game, but the online multiplayer and the campaign don't hold a candle to LAN parties. Halo LAN parties were amazing. Getting your friends together with like four Xbox 360s and using LAN to connect them and play Slayer, Big Team Battle, Capture the Flag, and the best one of them all, Living Dead. Double kill. Killing crazy. Janitor. Triple kill. Open season. Open kill. 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 Atrocity. Running riot. Kill him in jar. Hell's juice. Kill Tastrophe. Ah. Wild. Kill Pocalypse. Kill you there. 30 seconds remaining. Those were some of the best memories I made in middle school. And later high school with Halo 4. In August 2011, Drayden introduced me to a little indie game called Minecraft. You may have heard of it. I immediately fell in love with that game. I ended up playing Minecraft after school basically every day from 2011 to 2013, and still played it constantly after that. Minecraft itself was so different back then. There are a lot of things in the game now that weren't there back then, like villages, swamps, jungles, temples, potions, enchantments. You couldn't sprint back then. Minecraft kids these days are spoiled. With sprint. Good sir. I now have over 70 diamonds. 70? I have, se I have uh, 71 diamonds. Oh my god. <laughs> well, we know who the rich- Why are you always the richest in all our games? You gotta stay, Charlie. What can I say? I'm the capitalist, I'm an entrepreneur. Minecraft became something social for me. Playing the game with my friends after school. Faction servers were the big thing back then. And that was the peak of custom adventure maps. Even though there weren't command blocks yet. What's up, homies? My name is Sly Fox Town, and today we're gonna be playing a map called. Go. <laughs> The first two YouTube videos I ever watched were Sly Fox Hound's Jump and Lux Perpetua Episode 1 by Captain Sparkles. No! There we are, MVP! And I, of course, started making terrible Minecraft YouTube videos with my brother on a now deceased channel. I'm here making progress, and you're looting all this stuff without me. Yeah, because you suck. You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna use our very little wood and build a bridge across. Never mind. I, I really do have Minecraft and Minecraft YouTubers like Captain Sparkles and Sly Fox Hound to thank for my now incredibly invested interest in filmmaking and content creation. I started there and I was inspired by Captain Sparkles and Sly Fox Hound and Chimney Swift and a bunch of other Minecraft YouTubers who were, who were playing this game back then. That pretty much sums up gaming of the era. Let's talk about what the social culture was like back in 2009 and 2012, the middle school years. What were the trends of the time? Are you into silly bands? The first thing that comes to mind are silly bands. I don't know if you remember them, but they kind of popped up out of nowhere and just spread like wildfire. Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards had nothing on the silly bands. They could not compete with these new tradable, collectible items. I remember the tragedy of my favorite silly bands snapping, tech decks. Unlike silly bands, these little finger skateboards were actually kind of fun. I mean, you could play games with them and like, just actually do stuff with them. Yeah, ultimately, a tech deck was a fidget spinner before fidget spinners were a thing. But still, tech deck was cool, okay? During this time, middle school, Owl City was probably my favorite musician. Gotta love Fireflies. But Shooting Star was actually my favorite song from him at the time. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you One Republic! I also discovered One Republic during this time. My favorite songs from them were All the Right Moves and Good Life. And I still listen to One Republic today. 
but my favorite song from them has become Wildlife instead of the ones I previously named. Not that the ones I named are bad, it's just my preferences have evolved. Maroon 5 was probably considered the most popular band back in that time. Like, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing moves like Jagger, at least in my middle school and my, you know, local community. Everyone loved that song. However, I didn't personally start listening to Maroon 5 until like 2018, um, and I didn't even like modern Maroon 5. I like exclusively listen to the album Songs About Jane, pretty much, and that's changed more since 2018. But back in middle school, Maroon 5 was not my cup of tea, but that's okay. The shows that were popular to watch in my middle school were iCarly, The Walking Dead, and Breaking Bad, and there are probably a couple others that I'm forgetting. I think maybe The Office, but for some reason, I feel like The Office wasn't actually that popular in my community until I was in high school, which is weird because The Office ended halfway through high school for me. I wasn't allowed to watch The Walking Dead or Breaking Bad when I was in middle school, but iCarly though, that was a good show. My favorite show back then is actually still my favorite show to this day, Psych. I love Psych. I did back then, and I still do now. My family and I would watch each new episode of Psych as it came out. Psych was not the most popular show in middle school. But that's okay, because despite what young Charlie believed, it's okay to be different. It's okay to like things that aren't popular. I got made fun of in high school for liking Imagine Dragons. In middle school, whenever Brayden would bring up Minecraft, I would try to, like, shrink, hide, and try to change the subject because I was embarrassed for liking this game that wasn't cool to like. But none of that matters now, and it never should have, because those people who made fun of me for my taste in media are not part of my life anymore. My life, like theirs, has continued, despite them at least at one point, disapproving of the games I play or the music I listen to. Now I live in Los Angeles, California, a city of 3,898,747 people. A far cry from the quaint small town of Batavia where I grew up. Living in this loud, crowded, bustling city has made me realize what Batavia and other towns like it have to offer. Simplicity, open space, friends and family, the woods, greener and cleaner parks, the quiet sounds of birds, water, and wind. Nostalgia can be overwhelming, and it's bittersweet. It brings memories that I will never experience again. But these memories are valuable. Some are great memories I will cherish forever, while others are bad memories that shaped me in some way. Either way, I'm happy they happened. I'm happy. I'm happy listening to the music I listen to. I'm happy playing the games I play. I'm happy watching the movies and shows I watch. And I don't care what Zach or Nick think about it, or anyone else for that matter. If I could say one thing to middle school Charlie, it would be this. It doesn't matter what other people think of what you like. Do what makes you happy and cherish the moment to make good memories. Because someday, all you will have from this time in your life are the memories. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like down below, and while you're here, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel, it means a lot to me, and I will see you in the next video. One more thing, as you know, if you've been following me, I am a filmmaker. 
this July I'm directing a dramatic short film and right now we're running the GoFundMe campaign to fund it. So if you're so inclined, I would greatly appreciate any and all contributions to the campaign to help fund this short film. I think it's going to be a great one. I'm really excited for it. I got a great team and everything. The link is in the description below. More information and material will be released as it's created. Any little bit helps at all and it's greatly appreciated. We'll have like a pre -viz little like teaser for it. If you're feeling generous and you want to support independent filmmaking, then go on down to the description and click that link. Thank you, and take a look.